Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. As you know, the topic here today is doing well by doing good. And I think that we're starting on a good footing here because I, I definitely sense, and it's only on the side of the audience, that it's much hotter on that side of the room than on this side of the room. <laughs> so we're already doing something right because we're, we've lowered the air conditioning and we're, we're having a positive impact on the planet. Um, so on that note, let, let's start off because this is a, you know, it's a topic of great importance to ourselves, our children, and our planet. And I certainly have a few white hairs, and I've seen a lot of new announcements by companies about new initiatives. So let me ask, and we will start with Natalia, is this just another PR stunt? I don't think so, because uh, there's so much um, investment related to doing good or sustainability or corporate, corporate social responsibility. Uh, it doesn't matter the way we call it. Uh, for example, us as a company where we were born to make cities better places to live. So uh, in terms of mobility, there are a lot of impacts and uh, there's a lot you know, in the game. So uh, I don't think it's a, it's a PR stand. Obviously, it has to be communicated, but uh, if you don't feel it like in your vision, there's no way a company is going to be successful without be doing uh, uh, well. Okay. Eric? Yeah, I, I think the same. I mean, we, we've born uh, to accelerate the change to more sustainable ways of transportation because we believe that that's what the world needs. Uh, and companies without values uh, are not going to succeed. And, and the company needs companies with values. Uh, the world needs companies with values. And definitely it's not a peer stand. And all the companies we're working now are working on that. Uh, energy, energy companies are working in the direction of changing the, from uh, conventional ways of producing energy to, to clean energy, to the, the car manufacturers are changing from uh, combustion engines to, to electric cars. So uh, all the mobility and all the energy production is, is switching to more sustainable ways. So. We're seeing a lot of you know, the younger generation are looking to join companies that, that have a long-term commitment to a more sustainable type of uh, business activity. Uh, but do you think companies are just adapting to, to, that, to that desire from their employees because they need the employees? or are they doing it really out of the goodness of their heart? I think it depends on the companies. For sure, there will be some that will do that just to get more employees. But I think it's clear that if we look at future generation, the only way to have an actual impact is for all the companies to be more engaged at a sustainable level. Yeah. yeah, also companies are founded by people, people who have values and beliefs in things. So again, like some companies might not, but I definitely think there are many people out there trying to rethink, re reinvent businesses uh, and incorporate a social mission to them. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm curious, uh, Jeff, your, your, your business of, is mainly focused in Asia. Do you think there's a difference in attitudes of companies and sustainability in, in Asia versus, say, Europe or the US? Um, I don't think it's geographic. Uh, I mean, the difference is, to me is not geographic. It's, it's really more uh, each company, um, especially I think the larger, older companies, probably CSR is kind of a new trend for them, and they're reevaluating this. Um, but for many of the newer companies, the younger companies, I think they have started with more of a sustainability in mind when they started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we're talking about doing well by doing good. Um, mm -hmm. Is there really a difference between you're doing you're doing good because there's profit in it, or are you doing good because it's just a good thing to do? Do you think that it matters, Giovanna? Well, I think it matters when it comes also to the ways you choose to do good. That's the focus on doing it well. I mean, obviously companies want to make profits as well, uh, and the right way to make sure that doing good is incorporated in their agenda is to make sure they do it well. They need to be efficient also when they work mm -hmm. towards a sustainable goal. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times we talk about doing well is you know, something that has a, we're measuring maybe CO2 or, or pollution or, or helping people, but 
Um, you know, let's, t let's bring this into another realm, which uh, is very much on everybody's minds these days, which is the use of people's data. And so many companies rely on that data in order for, for them to have a business model that makes sense. Um, what are your thoughts on that? And do you think that there's a need for citizens or for governments to perhaps impose limits on how citizens' data is actually being used? Does somebody want to take a crack at that? Yeah. I, I want to jump one moment to the previous question. If, if, I, I think uh, we are going to save the world and we are going to do good uh, with technology. And we, for the technology, we need uh, money. And we will get money if we make profit. So everything, it, it's OK. I mean, uh, we, we, yeah. we, that's the only way we will save the world. With the, I think with technology mainly, and, and we changing the way we, we do things. But technology is going to help for that. So that, sorry for not answering your question, but. Uh, so are you, are you saying that if there's no profit in saving the planet, the planet is lost? No, I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm <laughs> not just kidding. <laughs> course, but I'm saying that. The, that's the extreme. Yeah, no, technolo technology is going to save the world. I believe that. I think new technologies are going to save the world. And we need money to make these technologies. Yeah. And data. <laughs> and, but adding on so, that, I think I would say that I actually don't care if you do good because there are profits on it. On, so I come from the development sector. I work with NGOs, philanthropy. And we are not going to change the world that way. So if corporates are doing good because that's good for them, they are making money out of them, I think that might be the way of changing things. Yeah. But there's an interesting point in there. It's like there's really two things. It's like, will te is, is technology the answer? You're and then, then there's, you know, is, is, is really, is, is profit the answer? That there's, there's two, those two concepts in, in, that, in that very same thing. If you don't make a profit, you can't continue business. You go out of business. That's right. So, so making a profit is a minimum requirement. It's a necessity. But it's insufficient. So uh, technology, I think, is really cool. I love all these new technologies. But again, those are just tools to use. And Technology by itself is neither good nor bad, and it won't solve the problem by itself. In fact, it creates other problems as well. So it depends on the people using it. So if their incentive is to make a profit, and they use it in a way which generates lots of good things for the public, terrific. Uh, if it ends up making them lots of money at the expense of everybody else, that's probably not good. Now, if, we're, if, if technology is not the solution, right? What would be part of the solution? Us, changing our minds uh, and working every single day to, to make choices and decisions in business or you know, personal decisions right. that are strongly like, um, driven by the way we want to impact socially, so, so economically. Values. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Strong values and, and, and an ethical behavior because sometimes we miss that kind of, of behavior in our day by day, you know, to to so write. How, how how would we do that as a society or as companies? And is that is is it the role of companies really to to instill values in its employees? I think it's already that that has already started. Okay. Uh, there's Thanks. a new. Yeah, you're shaking your head. Yes. I think there is <laughs> the need for a cultural revolution in that sense. I completely agree. Technology is a tool is a means, what well, we need to choose the end, the objective. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I agree with Natalia, the people are the ones who are going to make that, that kind of choices, and corporate are made by people in right. the moment. And that's the moment which, yes, motivating, it can be one way or another, but definitely a company will have to lead that kind of change. Yeah, well, we've, we've certainly seen a lot of controversy in the last, uh, just in the last several months with a, uh, with, uh, over in the last several years, we had a change in, in leadership at, uh, at Uber, and we had a change in leadership at WeWork. Um, I mean, that gets really to the question of values and, and what matters and how you treat people. Um, so what are your thoughts on that, Patricia? Yeah, I think also we have a responsibility as customers. Those companies also are serving the needs of the clients' customers, and we are employees, but also make 
purchasing decisions and make decisions on what kind of businesses we want to support. So I think we can create incentives uh, on that so that corporates can follow. So of course there will always be people that sometimes like say something and do something different, but I think it's our responsibility to hold them accountable to that double standard. Uh, that's a very interesting thought that customers have a responsibility. Um, I kind of ask a challenging question is, aren't customers part of the problem? They want, they want more, they want more beef. They want, right? And beef is, is a very, very, uh, uh, you know, it's not very good for the planet, it turns out. Um, so uh, who, who's at fault here? Yeah, I mean, oh, really, companies, companies, think, companies, no, no customer. <laughs> <laughs> customer is always right. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, I think a, an example of doing things right is Tesla, for example. Uh, you know, the the first electric cars were not best than the other cars. You know, were not fa were slower, didn't have much range. So Tesla did okay. I'm gonna make a better car, faster, quicker, uh, efficient. Uh, you know, more, more te with more technology autonomous, and everybody wants to buy a Tesla, you know, b because it's better. So we have the responsibility of th doing things better with values and have a positive impact. And the customer will choose that if it's better. Yeah, interesting. Well, it, it, it's only we've seen it here in, the, uh, in, in Europe as well as in the U.S. You have a company called Jewel. It's uh, very successfully sold, uh, you know, these uh, quasi-cigarettes, uh, uh, vapor sticks, um, and it took it, it really took years for the regulators to catch up. So there, there, I think you have a clear example of a company that satisfied what the customers wanted. It's only knew how to perhaps influence the customer behavior. But so, how do we protect ourselves as a society? You're, I'm asking. You're putting a bad example, I think. No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. There's laws, no? Again, Pardon? there's laws again selling yeah. nocive products. Right. No. So, uh, uh, to, to be to be a little to challenge, mm -hmm. does that mean we should have more regulation? I think Sometimes. That, yeah. 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 It depends on the situation. Okay. Yeah. And also more, ahead, I more education too. More education of. Yeah, of values. Right. Okay. In that case, Jewel, I mean, they're, they're quite aggressively targeting young people right, as consumers um, and getting them addicted to their product. Um, they cut back in the U.S., but overseas, they're still doing it. So that might be a case where more regulation would be helpful. Right? It's, it's a product that uh, directly impacts health. So in that situation, I think it might make more sense. In, in other situations, uh, you right. know, that we have a lot of overregulation. Okay. Does, uh, so there's a question that goes begging is that does capitalism need to adjust? Does it need to change? Does it need to have a softer face? A more human face, maybe. <laughs> yeah. You know, more related also to the, to the value that we can create as companies, mm -hmm. you know, in a, in a social way, because the first thing also we do is, is creating jobs. So um, maybe if we make it more human and, and we start to, to, you know, to, to measure also the success of companies, not only by dollars, but also by other impacts and, and the value they are creating in, in other ways. Because success definition also has changed a lot. That's quite interesting. So how, how, what do you tell your investors? Oh, I'm doing, a, I'm doing well, I'm doing good, um, but I could be doing even better <laughs> if I did you know, less good. Instead of giving you a 10x return, um, I could give you a 15x return. What, 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 what will your investors say? I, I think it's time-based. I think if, if you're looking at a discrete time span, short term, of course, the investor wants a bigger return, right? But if you're doing 15x, you're probably doing it at the expense of your future. And if you, if you go to an extreme, it probably means that the market will push back on you. So if you want to have a long-term sustainable business, uh, intentionally taking less off the table could actually be in your benefit. 
the problem is that the management structures and whatnot, the, the governance, is really optimized for short-term returns. Exactly. So I, I don't see how, how, how can we possibly incentivize investors to take a lower short-term return um, because there's a longer possible return. Now, all the investors I've seen, they, they, want, they want the 10, 15x in three years, five years. They don't want to wait 10 years. Why do I want to wait 10 years? I can't, you know, I, I want the boat now. Um, yeah, but there I, is more and more research also that tell us that you can invest in sustainable companies without sacrificing on returns. Maybe not on, on everyone, but that space is opening, and there is more and more research proving that maybe there is a middle ground where you can get both of them. How, how would you think we could maybe measure this doing good? Um, is, do you think do you have any thoughts on, you know, did you get little bonus points? Uh, if you do, you know, you get three gold stars if you did well, if you get four if you did really well. Uh, you know, is, this, is there some methodology we could develop so that maybe we could then use that, mm. that measurement system to incentivize people, maybe lower tax rates, maybe you know other types of in, um, incentives. I think there is already a lot that we are doing in terms of measuring the impact in a different way. And in the last few years, that's what we are working on as well, we found different kind of indicators that show it more evidently. And when it comes to the social impact, environmental impact, people are paying more attention to that now. Obviously, it would be amazing what you said if there was a formalized way of putting stars on whoever is <laughs> behaving better in that sense, as you're doing a school with children. But I think that we may go in that direction. Yeah. And possibly, as you said, there are moments in which the legislation follows and others in which the legislations can be leading the way in that sense. Uh, Patricia, I think your company is uh, developing yeah. kind, of, kind of a scoring system mm -hmm. for for, doing companies. Good for yeah. companies. Maybe yeah. you could talk yeah. about that a so little bit. Yeah, so we actually gather data from many different sources. We aggregate and we create scores for sustainability, environmental, social, different dimensions. Um, depending on what your interest, you can customize it and you can have, but then we gave a score to each company um, according to those different criteria. So currently we do for investors, uh, but you could see in the future, I don't know, consumers with an app, you go to the supermarket, you go somewhere, and you can see what sustainability score the different companies have. And that hopefully sh could contribute to create incentives in the right direction. Do you think it'll be easier for perhaps uh, European nations to to address those issues versus perhaps Asian or uh, US or South American or African countries? You think some, some areas of the world have, mm -hmm. can react faster or better? I think, I think the, in China, for example, is the, is the country that is accelerating faster uh, with cleaner, cleaner energies and electric cars. So I think it depends on the on the needs of the country. Uh, they have a real health problem there. So it, uh, as Jeff said, it, it, it's not geographical. It, it depends on the on the on the needs of the country or the area. I think. But I think maybe regulation also helps. China has a really a strong regulator body. I don't know if that helps. The European Union is doing a lot of regulation in this forcing companies mm -hmm. to disclose more and more information so that we can know what they are doing. So I think maybe we need some support yeah. in that direction from regulators so that we can, we can have the information and we can move in the right direction. Yeah. I, I see quite the opposite ha happening in the United States. The uh, U.S. is really moving very far away from regulation. Um, and therefore, you know, I kind of wonder, you know, we, we've seen more of, a, I guess, more of a trend for deregulation than regulation. I'm wondering, where do we find the balance? What do we do? I mean, at the end of the day, we're coming back to the topics we were discussing before. We are people at governmental level, within companies, there are still individuals. If the companies are leading the way in the US, if they choose to go towards sustainability more and more, there will be a change in that direction. If in China, the government is going towards sustainability, that will be the same. 
I think it depends on the people. That's why before I was thinking about cultural yeah. sort of So that, that's, that's an interesting point. You, so you really think it's the people running the companies that are driving it, or do you think it's, it's the markets that say, we think there's money in doing good? Customers are people customers. too. Customers. So customers. Customers are people too. We yeah. are employees yeah. and, and customers every day, depending on the situation and our choices. We lead the change as well. And so we have customers can, can lead. Com companies are kind of being pulled in that direction. Um, and oh. also, there are, each day, there are more and more banks that are you know, um, also giving or not loans based on social and environmental impacts. Yeah. Yeah. I think also you have lots of startups, right? And in economies where you, have, where you do have an active startup scene, uh, if the incumbents are taking down too much profit and abusing their power, then it creates an incentive. Uh, you know, there's money to be made there. And then it attracts startup companies that come in. They often spend more time listening to customer demands and, and creating new things, innovations, which are more in line with the demands of the customers. Whereas the incumbent players have gotten old and stopped listening to customer demands. Um, so I think in those types of economies where you have a lot of startups, it actually creates a balancing power. So it's a, a Darwinian environment mm -hmm. where those that do good are naturally attracted to, to filling a market need. Yeah. 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 Right. Just some last thoughts from each one of you. We'll just go straight down the line. So is this a PR gimmick? What do we do? How would you save the planet? <laughs> Just an ordinary type of question for the dinner table. <laughs> Simple one. Uh, our part, I mean, it depends on everybody. Not, not only one person or one company. Everybody has to do something. What we are trying to do is to, to make a more efficient and sustainable use of our energy. So we produce a lot of energy that we cannot use because we cannot control when we have sun or we, we have wind. And what we are doing, basically, we are storing this energy in electric cars, and when countries need it, we put the energy back to the grid. So that's what we do. What we do is try to make, uh, use as much energy as we can to make the energy more efficient. Patricia? So is this a PR? Uh, I don't know. Um, I think for many companies, yes, it is. But that doesn't mean that it has to end there. I think there is a lot of education and incentives and things that need to come in place so that we all move towards that. How do I try to save the planet? I try to change the incentives of financial markets because I think financial incentives are important and that's why we are trying to bring social impact into financial markets so that now we can make financial decisions taking in also into account sustainability criteria. Well, when it comes to us, it's clear that we realize that it could be a part of the PR strategy of a lot of companies, this idea of doing good. So uh, what we try and do is making sure that they are doing that, they are using as much energy as they can, pushing in the right direction, when they are demonstrating that to investors as well and to their customers. So you connect what they are doing with indexes and indicators of what is the impact at a social and environmental level. Jeff? Um, surely there are lots of companies that are just doing PR, right? Um, but if they actually end up doing good things, okay, I'm fine with that. Um, I think most, most consumers are smart enough to see through uh, very simple gimmicks. Yeah? Um, but I do, I do think actually many companies now are becoming much more sustainably and kind of socially minded, um, and that the younger generation is truly much more engaged and motivated by those things. And as a result, companies are adjusting. Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> well, I think PR and communication matters. So if it, uh, you know, get a company in, in, in a place that is good also for the people, it doesn't matter where it started, it, 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 it was just an action of, of PR. Uh, more and more business also has it on, on their own DNA. And uh, talking about me, <laughs> as you told us to be like straight on that, a good bet for gender inclusion. Maybe we could have more women, like 
like leaders um, in the government and also in companies, we could we could change the situation. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Matter of fact, I think that's a great point to, to kind of end things on because I think inclusion is, is all part of this conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, the world's been totally controlled by, uh, and I'm the first one to say this, by a lot of you know white men over the years. And I think that by getting the diversity of opinions, right? you look at all the surveys that have been done, it's really quite clear that you can make a lot more money if you've got all kinds of people on your team and on your board, different colors, uh, different, different backgrounds, uh, you know, from different sects and different beliefs. Um, there's something really magical that happens. And I think that's really extremely important to, to have that as part of our doing, you know, doing well by doing good. Um, because it's, it's all, it, it is all related. Yeah. And I think, you know, personally, I think we have a responsibility to, it's only to our children to uh, leave them um, with a, a, a better planet. And I, I, I certainly hope that's the direction that we're going into. Um, I'm not always convinced that we are. We, we kind of have all these bumps and, you know, backwards and forwards that we're experiencing in a society. But, um, um, you know, I, I hope we're, we get there. So thank you all. Thank it's you. been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.